In the last video, I created an emulator for the Sinclair ZX80, and in this video, I'm going to show the emulator running a Sinclair ZX81 ROM and uh, discussing the source code and what differences there are between the, the emulator for the Sinclair ZX80 and the Sinclair ZX81. So I'll just start the emulator for the Sinclair ZX81 here. And uh, I'll, I've put in some extra features. So when I type to load something, it prompts me for the file name that I want to load. So if I just, because um, I did a demonstration program, just that displays us the uh, character set of the ZX80 in the last video. So I did done the same uh, source code here for the ZX81, and it will just uh, load up, and it uses the cassette interface uh, to actually do the saving and loading, so it's authentic to to actually load in from the Sinclair ZX81 and ZX80 themselves. So this is the uh, actual M, uh, the sample basic program showing it running the character set, and then just doing the display of uh, a sine wave using the plot function of the ZX81. Now the ZX81 had kind of, I suppose what you might call pseudo graphics, so they're, they're kind of blocky graphics, but you could actually have a plot command. So you could so you could do some sort of graphics type features which you couldn't do on the ZX80. Uh, and it's not particularly fast, uh, but at the time it was fantastic. I remember, I remember doing programming and weren't bothered about the speed at all because I guess there was no comparison really to make uh, with it. So if you just hit enter and it will show the uh, actual source code. So this is similar to the source code in, of the last uh, video for the ZX80. Uh, so if you want to do the comparison between the two, you can look back at that video. Uh, and there's also on the ZX81 a fast mode. So if I go into fast mode like that, and now it, this is then operates a bit like the ZX80 so that it will just dedicate all its programming time to actually run in the code. So if I run this again, you'll see that actually you don't get to sit on this. I put a uh, slow command in, in that line too, so I'll just take that out. Oops. Uh, and go into fast mode again. So when I run this time, it goes into, into the fast mode and it doesn't do the display synchronization, so you don't get a display while it's running, but it runs a lot quicker, and it then comes out and does the display at the end of it. So if I hit enter, I'm still in um, fast mode, and you'll see uh, as I go up and down, you get like the uh, little synchronization issues, and if I go back into uh, slow mode again, and on the source code, you see that it actually takes a lot longer to update the display. So as I've put the feature to load uh, from t from files like their tape files, I'll just demonstrate a couple of games before I go through the source code. Um, so if I um, just do the load command, and on the ZX80 you didn't have to put quote marks, there was no such thing as file names, but you have to put two, um, two quotes uh, with, uh, without a file name between them. And a game that I used to have back at the time Galaxian, because I used to, it was my favourite game in the arcade at the time, and it was, I used to spend hours playing it on the ZX81. Uh, it's not quite the same as, as in the arcade, uh, but it's kind of along the similar kind of uh, lines as the as the actual arcade one, and it gave, it gave me enough entertainment. Because uh, of course the graphics aren't quite as well, well, uh, by a long way aren't as well defined as in the arcade. Uh, but it was just as an enjoyable and uh, simple games were much more entertaining. Well, actually, I still find this really entertaining to play because I, st I still really like the uh, the Galaxian game. The um, the ca visual capture uh, that I'm using is probably slowing this down a little bit and making it a bit bit more jerky than it would be if if I wasn't capturing the video. Uh, so it's a, it's a bit smoother in, in real life. Uh, this actual uh, gameplay, uh, but it gives a good idea of, of how it emulates. And also, there's a, so I've added some other features. So if I press Escape, it goes into this display where I can do things like reset uh, the computer, and I'll, I'll just load one more game up. Because quite rec uh, in 2010, I think it was someone uh, wrote a con game, which is really, really 
neat for this X81. So I'll load that up now and show it. Um, I don't know if people are still doing much for the X81, doing development stuff, but certainly it should play all the existing games. I haven't got 49, there's like pseudo high res games, uh, like one called 49. I haven't got that running quite yet. So there's still a bit of work to do on this. Uh, and then there's a, like a one bug which I haven't managed to fix in, in the uh, ZX, Z, in the Z80 emulator. Uh, but apart from that, it seems to be running quite well. Once I get that bug out of the system, I'll hopefully go on to try and make his Sinclair Spectrum emulator as well. So this is the, the game which is written so by Paul Farrow uh, in 2010, it says on the screen, uh, a con game, and it's pretty pretty neat. I remember playing, I had a con game for the ZX81 at the time, and I don't know if it was sim similar to this, it's kind of similar to this, but I don't really remember exactly what it was like. But, you know, this guy's done a really good job of making this game for the ZX81. You know, it, considering the graphics restrictions, it's, uh, it's a really neat emulation. Yeah, it's probably running a little bit because I'm cap capturing the screen. It's running a little bit slower than my, it probably would do if I uh, if I wasn't capturing the screen. Um, but it's a it's a quite an entertaining game to play, and uh, this is more probably more like the arcade one than the Galaxian game that I was just playing. Yeah. But the yeah the screen screen capture I'm using is is making a bit more jerky than it would be otherwise. And after this, I'll go on to just talk through the source code, the differences between the ZX80 emulator, which I did in the last video, and the uh, ZX81 emulator. There's not that many differences. Um, there's a couple of differences, and then there's the extra features I've put in like loading from cassette tape and saving to cassette tape. When I say cassette tape, what I mean is the like files which like emulate kind of late loading and saving cassette files. So I'll go through the source code now. There aren't that many differences between the ZX81 and the ZX80 emulation. Uh, so I've got uh, the CPU emulation in Z80.C. And in this file, it's basically the same as the file that I had in the last video for the ZX80. Uh, and I've got the each of the opcodes for the CPU here and uh, the emulation for each one. And in the last video, for when I did the ZX80 emulation, I put in just the opcodes which I needed to actually run the ZX80 emulator. Uh, but I've added the final ones. I've gone through the Z80 documentation. I've gone through, I had two data sheets open and the book because there are some errors in the data sheets, uh, but all the opcodes are in there. I know I've got a, I've got a bug somewhere in one of these opcodes. Uh, I'm not sure where it is at the minute, but I, so I need to resolve that. Whether or not that was an error in the data sheet or an error for me, it's probably my error. Uh, anyway, it's bound to be my error really. Uh, so somewhere I've got to resolve that. Uh, but that's the only difference between the ZX80 and ZX81 emulation as far as the CPU is concerned is I've finished putting the opcodes into the code. So if I now go back to the source code and so I've added the directory here for ZX81. So the ZX81 emulation source code it's basically the same as the ZX80 emulation source code. At the top here I've just got some definitions because I've been going through the ROM trying to decipher what it's doing so I can try and fix this uh, bug that I've got. There's this character set here for the ZX81 which is different to the ZX80 character set so these definitions are separate, uh, different. And in the main function here, uh, so it initializes the display, initializes the Z80 processor emulation it mirrors memory in the same way that the ZX80 emulation works. So it mirrors memory from 4000 hex to C000 hex, and that's for the display. So it can do, the, so it can send information to display. And then I've got these callbacks down here. So I've got a clock callback for doing, so I can do things on individual clock cycles, decide what needs to be done. I've got a disable non-maskable interrupt 
cycle back here. So the actual hardware of the ZX81 disabled and enabled non-mask wind drops in, in hardware. Uh, so that's additional to the, what the ZX80 emulation was doing. And then these are the same, the keyboard callback and the display callback port are the same as on the ZX80. And then it starts the execution of the ZX81 ROM. So here's the disable non-mask or interrupt callback. Uh, so this is new to, to, the, to this emulation. It wasn't in the ZX80 emulation. All it does is just flags to disable non-mask or interrupts. But also on this port, it does a vertical synchronization for the display. So it does a display refresh. And then below that, I've got this keyboard callback, which was in the ZX80 emulation as well. Uh, and it uh, will enable non-maskable interrupts when and the, when this occurs. Also, on the input from this port, it will go into the fast mode for the pro uh, for the actual computer. So this is when it loses synchronization to the display, and the display goes bang blank because it's doing actually it's running putting all of the CPU into running the basic program. There's also source code in here, which is additional, which is also I've added to the ZX80 emulation, which to do with loading files from tape, and it just converts the stuff from the the tape file, which is opened up, and converts those into pulses, which the ZX81 ROM will recognise and will actually load the the data into memory. So that's all that code there. Uh, and then it does keyboard handling, so it gets keyboard key presses from the system and then converts them into a value which will, it will then return to the Z80 CPU so that the ZX81 emulation knows uh, that there's been a key pressed. And then the display callback here, which is the same as in the ZX80 emulation, uh, it does the vertical synchronization so it can do a display refresh there. And then just below that, it does the saving uh, of a file. So it does the reverse of the loading. So it converts pulses from the actual CPU, which the ZX81 is generating, and it converts those into bytes, which it saves to a file. So it can do saving and loading of information. And then the clock callback it's pretty much the same as the ZX80 emulation, uh, apart from it does this non mask interrupt stuff, which just is very simple. All it does is it creates a frequency, a scan line frequency on the non mask interrupt pin, so that when it goes into into fast mode, it can still display what's on the on the ZX81 display. Also, I intercept a couple of. ROM addresses so that when it goes into the when the ZX81 goes into the cassette load and cassette save routines in the ROM, I know that to prompt the user for a, uh, a, a file name so that we can decide what files it, it needs to load and save. So I've added that to it. And below there is just uh, when it does the display update. So it, if it gets if it's up in the upper memory, so in that in that, in that mirrored memory, that C zero 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 zero, and it's a, 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 an interrupt gets triggered, so it triggers an interrupt there. What it what it does is it reads what's on the data bus, and it it then send it plots that on the on the display. It looks up the character in memory, the data from memory of the of how to display the character, and just plots that. I, uh, in exactly the same way that the ZX80 emulation did, and and that's that's all there is to the actual emulation itself. It's quite simple stuff. It's just knowing about what occurs in the hardware and how to convert that into something which can be sent to the ZX80, the Z, sorry, the Z80 port, so that the ZX81 ROM uh, thinks that stuff is happening in the real world like it would do on a real ZX81.